Hello, my name is Andrew Simister, Director of Digital QA, Planet's on-demand digital quality assurance solution delivered via our testing centers across the Planet global footprint. Today, we're going to focus in on a webinar around keeping up with digital change. We'll be discussing the need for all organizations, small to large, who deliver their business through digital platforms to have a formal approach to de-risking the impact of external changes that are outside of their control, particularly with the upswing in mobile and digital. We're gonna be looking at the upswing in the usage of mobile and the investment in the digital transformations, the challenges with evolving platforms, operating systems and devices, strategies for mitigating these risks. We're gonna to go to a guide for risk profiling in this environment, developing and implementing an approach to your digital quality assurance maintenance strategy, and the conclusions we've reached as we go through these processes. According to Gartner, by 2022, 70% of software interactions will occur on mobile devices. This is backed up by a current case study from Commonwealth Bank, where 53% of current transactions are made by digital devices, with 83% of customers now logging on by their mobile device. In regards to the investment, global spend on digital transformation technologies will reach a US 1.2 trillion in 2017, up nearly 18%, with a forecast of this reaching 2 trillion by 2020. In Australia alone, the spend by 2020 will be upward of 139 billion. So what we are seeing is huge investment in digital transformation, not only on IT, but in business change. So organizations are spending a large amount of money in, de in developing their digital portfolio, their mobile applications, their responsive websites. But ongoing, what are the impacts and challenges to maintaining them? Well, these really fall into four parts. There's the demands of your business and the changes that will be brought internally. There's demands of customers, which are increasing all the time. There's new technologies that will come to the market that you will need to implement to support your ongoing business. All these items are really inside of a business's control. However, the fourth item, the fragmented platforms, the evolving operating systems and devices delivered via our supporting vendors mean that changes outside your control can have a huge impact on your digital portfolio. And this is what we're going to be focusing on. So the challenges with this current market, as we mentioned, it's very fragmented. It's extremely difficult to be able to support your applications and ensure that they are compatible with a large range of operating systems, browsers, and devices. And these are continuing to change all the time. Incredibly difficult with the shifting fragmented environment that we must work in. And there's obviously the need for speed, being able to respond quickly enough to market changes to satisfy customers and internal stakeholders. A little bit more information around this fragmented market and the difficulty around being compatible. Currently, there's three versions of Apple's iOS operating system and seven of Android. Depending on where you are in the globe, the market share of operating systems differs and there's, there's a large number of those inversions. And interestingly, 52% of Australian smartphones now access a further connected device. So the internet of things is starting to play a part. Are you testing for all these devices and resolutions? On this slide, you've got a couple of tables there showing how difficult it is to be able to ensure your applications support the many different versions of mobile devices and, and pieces of hardware um, based on sizes, resolutions, etc. And these are changing all the time. So as we can see, there's many releases happening. Um, for example, iOS 10, four updates were released in 2017 alone, 15 updates of an Edge browser. And as regards to new devices, Samsung released in 2016, 31 varying devices, LG 19. So very difficult to ensure that you keep up 
with all these new implemented releases and hardware. So what are the potential impacts if you don't have a maintenance strategy and you don't ensure that these don't impact your production applications? Some statistics for you in, uh, in regards to the functionality and usability element. 53% of users will uninstall a mobile app that crashes or freezes or has errors. 68% will, will leave a website due to an unintuitive user interface. And 80% of users will attempt to use a problematic mobile app three times or less. In regards to accessibility, 15% of the world's population currently experiences some form of disability. And this is only going to increase with the, with the aging population expected to grow by 300%. You need to ensure that your applications support are disabled users. From a performance perspective, some more statistics, 53% of mobile site visits are abandoned inside of three seconds. 49% of users expect a mobile app to respond in two seconds or less, with 36% of users will stop if a mobile app uh, is heavy on battery usage. <clears throat> Once again, very high expectations of our customers in regards to the performance of our applications. Security, we've all seen in the press, the issues around uh, if a data breach comes around security. Again, another interesting statistic for you, 86% of websites have at least one serious vulnerability. And this could cost you upwards of $4 million if it was to eventuate. We need to ensure that none of these releases impact our security. So what options have we got around a maintenance strategy? Well, really, in broad terms, there are three opportunities to do some form of quality assurance. The first one is around production monitoring, which probably many small to medium organ organizations use as their mitigation. In this respect, there's really no formal testing. Releases such as operating system um, upgrades, uh, browser, new browser releases, new devices, these things are implemented and then your application um, uh, is, is in production and there's really just a monitoring effect of whether customers log issues through some kind of issue resolution system or go via call centers to be able to capture any impacts. This is very low cost because really you're not actually doing any formal testing and this may well be the best approach for, for releases that um, impact only non-critical applications or non-complex applications. These are minor releases where really you do not feel that the impact is going to have any great bearing or damaging to your business. Clearly, on a negative side, any issues are, are discovered too late. There's potential customer and business impacts and no ability to look at any non-functional requirements. You could take the approach of, of, producing, of, uh, of actually performing some <clears throat> formal testing once the release has gone into production. So plan and execute a regression test to ensure there's no impacts across your application's um, performance and functionality um, when there's a change or a new device. Once again, it's a little less lower cost. You're planning and executing a regression suite into production. And on the positive side, you will, able, you will hopefully able, be able to detect um, issues quickly and minimize the customer impact. Once again, this could favor non-critical or non-complex applications where there's minor changes or when new devices are released where there's no ability to run anything pre them being, into, being brought into production. Once again, on a negative side, all your issues will only be found into production. Um, your customer, obviously, this could have a customer impact and there's no ability to do any non-functional testing. The third and final option is to do some very proactive beta testing prior to these releases going into production. Um, in many occasions, you can get a beta version of an operating system upgrade or a browser upgrade and deploy that into your environment and execute formal testing to ensure that this doesn't impact your application. Clearly, from this side, all issues you would hope will be discovered before the release goes live. And there's an opportunity to test functional and non-functional requirements. This is a great option for critical and complex applications or where there's major version upgrades. Clearly, this is the most expensive option. So how do we determine uh, which is the best approach for us and be able to deliver and implement your maintenance strategy? First of all, we look at the, the risk of your digital portfolio. So looking at the applications and websites, etc., in isolation, understanding 
for each one, what the technical complexity is, including architecture, integration, and the features that it um, delivers. And then look at the business criticality. How critical is this app to your business? And if it was not available or there were issues, how would it impact your customers? Could there be a loss of revenue or an impact to your reputation? And be able to build up a heat map to be able to show for each application whether it would impact the uh, your business in a low, medium, high or critical way. You can then need to understand the risk of the change that you're going to be looking at. There's definitely a different approach, whether it would be, say, a minor release of an operating system as opposed to a version upgrade. Similarly, for hardware changes in regards to device or hardware upgrades as opposed to new. Once you understand that, you can start building up your strategy. Uh, you can look at the, the, <clears throat> the types of uh, testing you're going to apply for each of your applications in isolation and build up a plan. So for in this example, we've got three, uh, two applications and a website that's inside of our portfolio. And the risk profile for each of those um, has come out differently. So for application one, this is a high risk application. So we're going to perform um, formal testing uh, prior to production in some instances and then in production to ensure it doesn't impact our business. For web two, this is a low risk uh, website. So we're happy to be able to just do some monitoring um, and production testing because we think there is limited impact to our business. And once we understand to what level we're going to be doing our testing, we look at the characteristics of that change and what types of tests we're going to execute. So in this example here, application one, from a minor release, we're happy to be just looking at the functionality as we do not believe it's going to impact the more non-functional elements uh, of our business. As opposed to a version upgrade, where we're absolutely, um, we absolutely need to look at ensuring that nothing's impacted the security or the performance of our application. But how do we deliver this? Once we understand what types of testing we want to do, we understand to what level we want to do inside of our portfolio, we've got our risk profile together, there's then really three strands to support our business. There's people, the planning, and the tools. From a people's perspective, we need to have a, a team on demand, to be used on demand, that has the skill sets to be able to support uh, an understanding of the mobile market, uh, the technical skill sets, and also an understanding of the business impacts. We need to have um, evolved a release schedule for the for the different various releases across a period and be agile enough to support changes. We need to have the tools in place and an understanding of how we use those tools in certain circumstances to be able to support our, really, our maintenance strategy. And this includes the usage of things like emulators and cloud-based devices as opposed to real hardware, um, depending on what type of testing we're doing, assistive technologies to support accessibility testing, tools that will be able to help us in the performance and security side, and determine whether there's a, any, any um, uh, return on investment for automation as opposed to using manual or potentially crowd-based solutions for delivering it. Or maybe the best approach is a combination of these items that fits the bill. In regards to implementing our strategy, there's really two options, maybe a third. Can you deliver this strategy in-house? Obviously, determining your complexity of your digital portfolio, whether you have the in-house skills to be able to deliver it, the tools and the processes, or whether you're going to reach out and use a testing partner to, to assist you. Do you need actually to have an in-house capability when maintenance releases by their very nature are not happening all the time? Maybe being able to utilize an on-demand service which will have the tools, the devices and the processes in place may be a suitable option. The third option I alluded to is a combination of both. It may well be that the best approach is that you can utilize your own in-house capability to do things such as functional testing, and then utilize a testing partner who may well have hardware to allow you to do things such as compatibility testing. So in conclusion, changes outside your control can have a huge impact on your digital portfolio. And these are only going to increase in complexity and regularity. You need to define a solid maintenance strategy based on the complexity of your applications, the change and the business criticality. 
you need to put in place the necessary mechanisms to support your strategy, the people, the tools, the planning. And you need to determine whether you're going to, to support your strategy in-house or use a testing partner to help you. That's the conclusion of the webinar. Thank you very much for dialing in.